Hello guys, this is Lawrence Movies and today I will be bringing you 10 World of Warcraft Lore Facts Part 4. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. The Tuskar have a very specific way when it comes to practicing their religion. They carve out massive stone heads that allow them to communicate with their ancestors. The head acts as a body to the specific ancestor spirit and thus they're called the Stone Elders. In order to bind the spirit to the rightful statue, Tuskar shamans perform a ceremony in which they recite a chant to guide the spirit to their own stone. On top of that, they also worship a small pantheon of four different deities known as Karkut, Uchenoa, Tayutka and Isluruk. The Grammals, native to Pandaria, were created during the reign of Emperor Tian. The Emperor needed trusted delivery men, so he took a group of Trogs and warped them with the powers of the Whale of Eternal Blossoms, essentially creating the Grammal race. The reason why they were so efficient is because they can carry 5 times more than their own weight and they have an immense amount of stamina. Combine that with the excellent sense of smell and skulls as hard as granite, they make amazing delivery men. They were so essential to the Mogu Empire that during the Slave Rebellion when the Grummel sided against their masters, the Mogu army starved and no messages of vital importance were delivered. Because of this, many Mogu armies were oblivious to the rebellion which stopped them from creating a major force. Today, the Grummels work as traders, guides and they also have a long-standing delivery arrangement with the Shadow Pan. When Dalaran became the main center for all of the magic users across the land, Kirin Tor was created. Initially named Kirin Tor Advanced Research and Illumination Sect, it was in charge of cataloging and researching all spells and magics known to mankind. This organization was founded by the Majocrats, who were the rulers of Dalaran at the time, in order to practice magic safely without the interference of the Burning Legion and also to gather all of the knowledge in one place. Later on, the Majocrat lords were replaced by the Council of Six that serves as a governing body of the city-state of Dalaran to this day. Ogre society is based on violence and strength, meaning that the leader of the clan is the strongest ogre of them all. Any member can challenge the leader to a duel to the death at any point. If the leader wins, he keeps his position, but if he loses, the challenger is declared as the new ruler. He also steals all the possessions of the previous leader, as when the ogres split loot, whoever is the strongest one gets more and thus the leader usually has the best armor, weapons and all the other items. Best example of this was when Rexar joined the Stormwall clan and challenged Warlord Korgal to a duel, defeating him and assuming the position of chieftain. Why you come here? I've uh, come to join your clan. I want to be a stone mall too. When the original horde was formed, their first mission was to completely exterminate the Draenei race. Since the orcs made a pact with demons, they had forsaken their shamanistic ways and most of the shamans turned into warlocks. During the war against the Draenei, many orc warlocks completely carelessly wielded fell energies which greatly affected the Draenei. A lot of the Draenei survivors de-evolved into a sub-race known as the Broken or Krokul in the Draenei language. Their appearance changed as well as their intelligence and they lost their faith in the light. However, they didn't really have it the worst as some of the Broken even further devolved into the so-called Lost Ones. The Lost Ones are highly mutated and are much more primitive and savage than the Broken. Lich King, shortly after his creation, contacted and in a way manipulated the mage Kiltizad, who then joined him as a servant. Kiltizad had a task to create the Cult of the Damned, which was supposed to spread the plague and destroy the Kingdom of Lordaeron. For three years, Kiltizad was preaching and secretly recruiting people, promising them immortality and an ideal society. Most of the people who decided to join him were unhappy laborers just looking for a better life. 
However, rich, influential people were also manipulated by Kiltuzad's charisma such as the Barrow family, whose luxurious mansion turned into Sholomance, a school of necromancy. Even though some people were actually manipulated into believing something else and joining the cult of the damned, most people were just looking for eternal life and power that they never had as mortals. Two-headed ogres before the first war were extremely rare. Usually they were larger and more intelligent than other ogres and they also had a natural gift for wielding magic. Shogal at the time was one of the only alive two-headed ogres from his generation on Tenenor and he possessed all these traits which turned him into an excellent mage. Normal ogres can also practice magic as we have seen in the past but two-headed ones are much better at it and can even rival some of the best mages from Azeroth. Apart from Cho'Gal, most other two-headed ogres were created by Gul'dan and his rituals. The Arati were a tribe of humans who had united all of the various human tribes across the Eastern Kingdom and they created the very first human nation called Arator. Around 1200 years ago, descendants of this Tarati bloodline migrated south. They settled in a fertile valley and created a kingdom of Stormwind, which eventually became a power of its own. Recently, Stormwind as a city and as a kingdom was reduced to ruins in the war against the orcs, but then it was rebuilt once again. Today, Stormwind is the only powerful standing human kingdom and the center of the alliance. During the Third War, Nomrigan was invaded by a group of trogs who had broken through the lower reaches of the city from the depths of the earth. Not sure what to do, Gelbin, their leader, trusted his friend and advisor Thermaplug. Thermaplug put forward a plan to release toxic gas that would kill the invading trogs. Due to his secret hatred and jealousy for Gelbin, he falsified all of the evidence and the plan failed catastrophically. The invading trogs were enraged and they just pushed through the gas, while the gnomes were mostly affected as they waited safely in their home. 80% of gnomes were affected and those that actually survived turned into leper gnomes, a diseased, twisted and a violent subrace of the gnomes. According to Brand Bronzebeard, the Tauren were one of the original races of Azeroth, predating the arrival of Titans. Their exact origin is not really known, but it is believed that they have evolved from some unknown bull ancient. Due to the Tauren not having any written records, it is very hard to predict their past. However, they do have a long and a complex oral tradition, but the accuracy of it cannot really be taken seriously, even though a few of their stories did actually explain several events that we know have happened for a fact. Alright, that is all I have for this video, now do leave your suggestions on what you would like to see and also don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel already as it really helps out and keeps all the videos going and thanks a lot for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and see you next time.